Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's uh, session, at least uh, this hour session. Uh, we're going to be talking about All Matters Angel Investing. We're going to be talking about the African Angel Investing ecosystem, where we are today, uh, what the future looks like. Uh, and I'm really happy that I'm joined by a really good panel. But uh, before we get to the panel session, what I'm going to do is to make a quick presentation about uh, the Africa Angel Investing ecosystem. I'll also spend a few minutes just talking about the Africa Angel Academy, uh, who's the host for this uh, specific session. Uh, welcome and uh, hoping for a really great session. Let me share my screen. Okay, one sec, please. Okay. So I'm going to speak about the Africa Angel Investing Ecosystem and also just in general about the early stage investing ecosystem in the continent. Um, I'll, I'll rush through this part because I want us to get to the meat, which is to spend a bit of time with uh, the different speakers uh, that we have who are experienced angels uh, and uh, ecosystem players uh, in the Africa Angel Investing Ecosystem. So the session today, as I mentioned, is the Africa Angel Investing, where are we and what does the future hold? So a few words about uh, myself. I'm an angel investor. I'm part of the Victoria Business Angels Network. Uh, we're based out of Nairobi in Kenya. We make our investments principally in East Africa, but uh, of late we also make a lot of investments across the continent. Uh, I'm one of the co-founders and the fa a facilitator at the Africa Angel Academy, uh, and I'm also a board member at the Africa Business Angels Network uh, looking at East Africa. Uh, and uh, I also uh, sit uh, as a venture partner for Constant Investment Partners, which is an early stage investing venture capital fund uh, out of Nigeria, but making investments across the continent. So just jumping in about the Africa Angel Academy. So what we are is uh, Africa's dedicated angel knowledge network uh, delivered by African angel investors for African angel investors. So what we look to do is to really support the ecosystem uh, and what we, how we do this is by increasing the number and the confidence of active angel groups uh, in the continent. Um, I will speak about some of the statistics that we've been able to achieve in the last uh, two years since we were formed. Uh, the next thing we look at is we decrease uh, the early stage investing, uh, funding, and uh, knowledge gap for startups. Um, and this, what we do is we take angels uh, through content uh, right from the beginning till the end, talking about all the different aspects you need around angel investing right, from forming your strategy uh, to how you think about making investments, how you source your deals, uh, to how you manage yourself as a group, uh, to how you manage your investments, and how you eventually exit uh, your investments. Uh, we also look to increase economic prosperity uh, for African founders, angels, uh, and uh, impact uh, of startups. And the idea here is that uh, while we are doing all the different uh, things to support angel investors, what we want to do is to help them to create wealth uh, for themselves by creating successful startups that exit, uh, that create wealth for the startup themselves and for the angel investors, but also create opportunities uh, from uh, solving uh, the key challenges we have in the continent, uh, creating jobs uh, and so forth. Uh, the consortium partners uh, for the Africa Angel Academy is uh, Viridian, which is a South African uh, consulting uh, company, which is very active in the uh, early stage investing uh, ecosystem. There's the Victoria Business Angels Network out of uh, Nairobi, Kenya. And we have the Africa Business Angels Network, uh, which is the mother angel network for all the angel groups across the continent, uh, doing a lot of work uh, in terms of, uh, number one, educating uh, angel investors, number two, uh, creating networks uh, across the continent, number three, uh, tackling policy challenges. And we're really happy today that uh, we're going to be joined by Fadila, the Secretary General of the Africa Angel Academy, and she'll be sharing a bit more in terms of what Eban is doing in uh, the ecosystem. So why we believe angels are critical for the ecosystem, a couple of points there. Uh, the first is, uh, you know, they make investments uh, into startups. So they take the biggest risk. Uh, usually, if you look at this, the, the ladder of making investments, angels are usually the first who come in as an external investor before the other investors uh, start coming in. And so they're very critical in terms of risking the investments so that they get to the venture capital stage. And, you know, they move on to, you know, raise bigger uh, sums of money and solve the critical problems that you have in the continent. The second thing is that they provide knowledge and share experiences. Uh, most uh, angels will, will come from a technical background. They come with a lot of experience in terms of what they've been able to achieve 
from a work perspective, from a founding perspective. And so as they're working with entrepreneurs really early, they're doing a lot of work in terms of shaping the future of the different companies we're looking at. Uh, thirdly, they do a lot of mentorship. <laughs> we like saying that uh, as an angel investor, you're not just uh, you know, a financial or sort of like a startup mentor. Uh, every so often you're called in to solve uh, founder-related issues. Every so often you're called when uh, things are really tough just to be a support uh, to uh, the startups. And so that mentorship goes a long way in terms of being able to uh, you know, grow the companies um, uh, in the early stages. Fourth is providing access to networks and new customers. Uh, and we believe that uh, in uh, the continent where a lot of business is done from a relationship perspective, uh, angels come in to support uh, startups where they need to make their first sale, uh, where they need to hire the you know hire the first uh, person, they need to negotiate some critical uh, contracts with uh, you know big corporates and so forth. So they help a lot in terms of that because of the experience that they bring in and the kind of networks uh, they have in place. Uh, lastly, uh, they assist with core uh, investing and matching on uh, follow-on uh, round investments. And so when you have an angel on your side, as you're moving along, that's a partner that you have. They can help in fundraising. Uh, they can help you in terms of, uh, you know, introducing new investors and so forth. And so because of all reasons, uh, these reasons, we believe that angels are an essential part of uh, a functioning entrepreneurial ecosystem, but more so uh, in the continent. So in terms of the Africa Angel Academy, uh, we run a 13 to 14 weeks uh, cohort and uh, what we look to do is, number one, we have online content that has been created talking about the whole journey that you need to go through as an angel investor right from the beginning till the end when you're exiting your investment. So you go through that uh, content. Uh, it's available. Uh, the second thing we do is that we ensure there's weekly Q&A uh, sessions or, or master classes. And this is where we get to then share the live experiences. I think this is usually the most favorite part for most people who attend the sessions under the Africa Angel Academy because they get to interact uh, with each other. They get to interact with uh, experienced angel investors and to ask questions and to you know, be, answer some of the challenges that they may be facing in their angel investing uh, journeys. Uh, we also hold uh, startup showcases because we believe that uh, after you've gone through the content, uh, the best thing that we can do for you is to show you real examples, not real examples, but real companies that are raising money that you can choose to make an investment into. Uh, and uh, our experience so far has been of the startups that you showcase, 20 of them have been able to receive funding uh, at the end of uh, the program. Uh, and lastly, uh, we also mentor the groups that are created through the angel and the, the angels who join the cohorts. So it provides a mentorship just in terms of how you form your group. Um, then secondly, in terms of just how you maneuver the first couple of uh, steps. Uh, we're really excited that Naiban is here today, uh, which is one of the angel groups that was created post the Africa Angel Academy. And we'll get to hear from uh, one of the founders of Naiban and some of the members uh, of Naiban uh, as we get into the panel session. So in terms of the benefits to the angels, I'm not going to go through all of these, uh, but I would say the biggest uh, one for me is the ability to network with other people who are looking to make investments across the continent. Um, and uh, that goes a long way because we are seeing a lot of deals which are being done in the continent, which are cross, um, cr cross country. So, you know, as, as Victoria Business Angels Network, for instance, we made uh, investments uh, together with angel investors in Egypt, angel investors in Nigeria, uh, angel investors locally. So that networking ability, I think, is a huge, huge plus. Uh, please go to, the, to our website. Uh, there's a lot of tools and templates that we put out together. We have some case studies that you can be able to go through just to find the experiences that other angel groups have gone through, uh, startups that have received angel funding have been able to go through, uh, and so forth. In terms of the evolution of the Africa Angel Academy, we started in 2022, uh, just uh, looking to train five countries and training for seven angels. So far in 20, we started in 2020, sorry. So far in 2022, we've trained uh, angels across 13 countries uh, together with the UK. Um, and so far, 236 angels have been uh, trained. We're very fortunate that we've gotten a lot of support uh, from our partners uh, that are listed uh, down here. Our impact so far, 444 angels enrolled in the program, 18 African countries. We've ran six cohorts uh, so far. We have uh, 36 masterclasses that have been uh, held with different uh, experienced angel investors across the continent. Uh, we have 20 angel groups that have been featured in uh, our programs, uh, 40 investment uh, expert contributions, uh, and our participation is 50% uh, women and 50% men, which we're very proud of. 
because uh, it's really helping to ensure that some of the statistics we're seeing on the funding side uh, are going to correct in future as we have a better balanced uh, equation from the perspective of the investors who are looking to make investments. Uh, 17 angel groups have already been mentored uh, so far. So that's uh, enough about the African Angel Academy. If you want to learn more about the Academy, you can visit our website. Uh, I'll show that right at the end, uh, .com. Uh We usually have a running call for different uh, cohorts. So you're free, feel free to jump in and uh, express uh, interest in joining one of our cohorts. You can also just choose to come in as yourself and uh, purchase a course and participate uh, in the program without being part of a specific cohort. And of course, happy to answer any questions that you may have. So let's jump to the what's been happening in the Africa early stage investment uh, ecosystem. And uh, things have been quite positive. Uh, and uh, we're going to try and uh, dissect uh, the positivity with the panel uh, in a second. Uh, but let's just uh, share just sort of like where it started and where we are at. So the first angel group was formed around 2020. Uh, that is the Cairo Angels. Uh, and following that, uh, the African Business Angels Network that was then formed in the year 2015 with, uh, by eight angel groups across the continent. And uh, as of 2018, uh, we had the first angel investing report uh, in the continent, uh, which uh, shared a couple of highlights in terms of where the ecosystem was. Some of those highlights were that 76%, uh, which is uh, of the party that participated, or at least uh, that were there at uh, the year 2016, uh, were groups that participated in, in this uh, survey. The new groups uh, were launched by angels, uh, entrepreneurs, and uh, entrepreneur support organizations. Uh, there was a lot of activity in terms of formation uh, of the different groups. Uh, but then the challenge is that uh, there was not as much uh, happening from an investment uh, perspective. And some of the challenges had been highlighted at that point uh, were number one, the angel learning skills uh, that uh, most of the angels were experimenting in terms of how to make investments. Uh, and in certain instances, it was very tough for them to be able to do that, especially when they didn't have a very experienced angel who was the one who created the angel group. Um, there was a, a challenge from the technical areas where some angels felt they were not very comf uh, comfortable in terms of uh, you know, technical aspects uh, from a due diligence perspective, uh, the kind of deal structure that you use for making investments, uh, how to value startups, uh, ETC. Of course, some of these challenges still <laughs> remain up to date, but I, I think a lot has been done in terms of addressing them. Uh, then there was just the other challenge of the high risk of uh, deals falling apart uh, in the final stages. So on average, it took groups up to a year before they could conclude their first deal. And this is about uh, 2018. So just, uh, you know, jumping forward, uh, 2022. Um, so as of 2021, a report done by Brighter Bridges uh, showed that uh, we had uh, over 70 groups uh, across uh, 40 African countries. I think finally I will shed some details in terms of just how we are doing at that, uh, 2022 uh, so far. And these are just some of, this is a map uh, now, if you to look at it in terms of where the angel groups are, and you can tell most of the countries across the continent are represented by several groups. There's some that, uh, there's quite a number of groups and there's some that's just one group. Um, but then uh, some of the things that has happened is that uh, we've also seen a lot of investments uh, happening uh, by some of these angel groups. But uh, let me not steal uh, Fadi Lassanda, she can share a bit more about that. In terms of the characteristics of the angel groups of the 2021, uh, the first thing is 45% uh, uh, of the angels that were surveyed at least uh, were founders and entrepreneurs, 31% uh, uh, managers and executives, and 11% uh, high net worth. Uh, and I don't know why lawyers got their own category as 2% uh, in this case. Um, uh, uh, and in terms of where the angels then uh, really uh, came from, you know, from the continent and also, uh, also from outside the continent, as you can see, um, you know, uh, in, in the US, uh, in this case, quite a bit of interest, uh, also in Europe in terms of making investments and also in Asia. In terms of where the source of wealth are from, uh, you know, reinvesting their wages, uh, quite a number of them. Then there's personal wealth um, and earnings from previous exits, especially for the founders uh, and entrepreneurs. So just going on in terms of uh, the angel investors, so professionals, um, you know, looking to invest in the next generation of startups, uh, really excited about the African startup ecosystem. We've also seen a lot of angels who come at it that uh, they've done other traditional invest investments, but now they're feeling they want to see something more interesting because there's a lot of hype uh, or there's a lot of activity that's happening in the tech investing ecosystem. And so a lot of traditional investors are also saying, you know, can I dip my toe just to see 
whether I can make a return, whether you know, I can be part of uh, the movement. Uh, there have been a couple of successful exits, and uh, those, of course, have hyped up uh, the kind of return some of those successful exits have been uh, really uh, decent uh, in this case. Um, in terms of uh, how the investors make uh, the investments, most of the investments are done through syndicates or groups. Uh, and uh, on average, angels are making an investment of between $1,000 and $50,000 uh, per deal. Uh, but then since they're syndicating, they're able to uh, you know, put in a much uh, bigger uh, amount. Uh, so just jumping to the Africa Alice investment ecosystem. And uh, I'll run through this really fast because the information is available online and you can be able to access it. Uh, but really in terms of funding, if you look at uh, 2017, $560 million. Uh, if you move to 2021, $4.4 billion were raised by African uh, startups. Uh, if you move to what is happening at that uh, date, um, as at August of this year, as I mentioned earlier, $3.6 billion uh, had been raised by African startups, which represented 35% growth on 2021 numbers. Uh, and uh, if anything is to go by, uh, the last two months, the numbers have dipped a bit. Uh, but the expectation is that uh, we should be able to hit this 4.4 billion uh, mark and uh, move higher than that. So a lot of money going into startups. If you look at the most active investors, and this is for investments above $100,000, the most active investors have uh, been VCs, uh, you have Launch Africa, YC Combinator, uh, Lofty Inc. and so forth. Uh, but this tracks the deals which are being done on above $100,000, which in certain instances you may find that angels do not participate at that round, they participate a bit earlier. Uh, and so there's uh, some work that's being done to be able to create a better picture of what's happening in the angel space. Uh, there's some research that's going on at the moment uh, by the African Business Angel Network and the African Angel Academy and Brighter Bridges to try and uh, paint that picture. But yeah, interesting statistics from that perspective. Uh, and maybe just my last slide before we jump to the panel. Uh, this is a loaded slide. It has a lot of uh, content, uh, but just a few stats to pick out of these. As at August of this year, uh, 99 startups had raised uh, at least a million dollars, which is really positive. I think the, 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 as of 2021, I saw the number was, I think, 60 or thereabouts, uh, which is uh, quite impressive. Um, of those, 84% had their headquarters uh, in the big four, uh, the big four, Nigeria, South Africa, uh, Kenya, and Egypt. Um, and, uh, you know, just digging in, 70% of the companies were less than three years, yeah, uh, which I guess shows uh, that, that uh, transition. Uh, and 73% of these companies were called either seed or pre-seed uh, in terms of how they were labeled, uh, which it tells you it's a really early stage, which also gives a sense of what the valuations of the exits uh, would look like in the future. Uh, the median, median amount raised by this company is $2 million. Um, uh, and... Uh, something that we still need to work on uh, in the ecosystem. 11% of those uh, only had uh, a woman CEO uh, as part of uh, the team. So a lot of work uh, needs to be done there. Uh, if you look at uh, the stats here, the number has been changing uh, over this period. Of course, we'll see what happens at the end of the year. So I think that's the context I wanted to create. Um, and I'm going to now invite my panelists and stop sharing my screen. I'm going to invite my panelists uh, to put on back uh, to put on their videos, and we can uh, jump on uh, to our session. So thank you very much. I'm really excited to have the panel uh, here. Uh, very experienced uh, people in the ecosystem, grounded in the sense that they make uh, investments or they're playing critical roles in the ecosystem. So I'm going to ask them to introduce themselves. And as you make your introduction, feel free to pick out uh, any part of the presentation that I've just mentioned and uh, you know, share some thoughts around that uh, or at least your uh, views around that. And how I'm going to do this, uh, Biola, I'm going to start with you and then I'll uh, jump to Fadila, then Umulenga, and then uh, to Nick. Uh, Biola? Um, thank you, Stephen, and thank you for that presentation. Really a great context for our conversation. Um, I'm based in Lagos, Nigeria. I'm a deputy um, chair of the Lagos Angel Network. I also am actively involved in the Afropreneur Angels, which is part of Lofty Capital, one of the um, top investors um, on the continent, according to um, Stephen's um, slides. Also um, work very closely with Rising Tide in Nigeria, which is a female-focused um, angel investment group. 
past graduate of the African Angel Academy, um, and also have had the opportunity to mentor um, an angel group and a venture partner at Cairo Angels um, Syndicate Fund, a micro VC fund currently deploying across MENA, East and West Africa. So that's sort of my role in the ecosystem and really excited to be here and um, excited to see that um, Cairo Angels was one of the first, an- was, well, was the first angel group um, on the continent. So a little bit more data point for me that I didn't have before. So really happy to be affiliated with them and excited to be here today. Thank you. And uh, Biola, uh, before you hand over the mic to uh, Fadila, is there any part of the presentation that you want to talk to that? Uh, yeah. Oh, yes, I did want to um, point out, I think one of the things you uh, mentioned was around why do why do lawyers have their own category when it comes to the makeup of angels? And I think one of the things is that they are part of deals. They see a lot of deals happening. They are part of structuring deals, educating um, first time founders. And I think that at some point it does. They do see the opportunity um, close and personal. And so I think that it actually is really important to actually have that distinction just to go to show people also once again and how fundamental it is to make sure you have legal at the beginning of your journey. It's never too late to consult and have legal um, legal involvement in the formation of your of your entity, your company, or even our angel groups. So I thought that was an interesting point out, but I wanted to say what my take on why that is. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Bill. And like, many uh, more. Many that more you're a lawyer? I'm not, I'm not actually, <laughs> I'm not, but I have spent a lot of time with lawyers, a lot yeah. of times. So no, 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 but it's good to be here. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I'm going to disclose that I'm a lawyer. So it's good to know that uh, at least I'm a trained lawyer for that bit. <laughs> Thanks, Viola. Uh, well, do you uh, disagree with my observation then? No, I do not. I do not. I just didn't want to blow my own trumpet. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm here to help. I'm here to help. Thank you. Over thank to you, you Fadila. Oh, thank you, Viola, and thank you, uh, Stefan, for this beautiful presentation. My name is Fadila Chumba, and I'm the Secretary General at ABAN. So essentially, ABAN is the largest Pan-African network of uh, angel syndicate, angel network, and angel group that have emerged across the continent. So, uh, and ABAN's goal is to drive angel investing on the continent. And today we have around 60 angel group in more than 34 African countries. And we have a pool of about 1,600 angel investors. And I'm actually happy and glad to say that uh, today we have a pool of individuals who are now investing into startup consistently and professionally and due to the fact that we had the pioneer number of angel network that created this whole movement, you know, I want to um, uh, kind of uh, honor here the Lagos Angel Network, Victoria Angel Network, Cairo uh, uh, Angel Network, uh, Deso Angel Network. These were the first group that started this whole movement. And uh, because of uh, some of the angel investors were also committed to contribute to towards uh, the capacity building of individuals and also the effort from AAA. Today, we have this pool of angel investors that are actually actively investing into these new startups that are emerging on the continent. And um, I'm just going to pause here and uh, kind of like wait for uh, other questions that might come up. Uh, thanks, uh, Fadila, and thanks for creating that uh, context. At least now we have an actual number of angel investors, 1,600, which is big, uh, though it needs to be much bigger than that. Uh, Fadila, from the presentation, anything that you picked out that you wanted to just emphasize? Uh... Oh, uh, absolutely. You know, um, one of the elements that you had mentioned in the presentation is how important angel investing is in the uh, st- African startup uh, ecosystem. And I think it was you were, you were right to correct, to point out that angel investing is essentially the catalyzing tool that the continent needs in order to uh, uh, pretty much push or initiate the appetite for further investment that needs to happen on the continent. And uh, I must also highlight the fact that due to the work that is being done by angel investors and 
angel investing movement is uh, it must be right to highlight that uh, we must look at angel invest investment and angel investors as uh, an economic development tool simply because these are the individuals that are able to commit their capital, their time, and the network, making sure that this new wave of uh, value creation have the, uh, the fuel to actually push and succeed in the market. Thank you, uh, Fadila. Uh, and uh, at some point, I'll invite you to just mention some of the things that uh, Eben is doing in terms of just uh, you know pushing the angel investing ecosystem, especially the Catalyst uh, you know uh, fund, which I think might be interesting for some of the angels who are uh, in the conversation. Uh, Omulinga, over to you. Thank you, Stephen. Good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, I'm Umulinga. I am um, an investor in Africa. That's my day job. I've been investing in Africa since uh, 2008. And I'm also an angel investor. Uh, I am a part of uh, Naiban uh, with Nick. And um, I invest uh, also with uh, Josie Angels, uh, Dakar Network Angels and uh, Business Angels Wanda. I really uh, enjoy angel investments, even though it's very hard. Uh, because we are um, helping entrepreneurs uh, solve big problems and uh, also entrepreneurs are the best at creating jobs and we need um, jobs uh, on the continent. Thank you for having me, Stephen. Merci. Um, any part of the presentation that uh, you wanted to uh, talk to? Actually, uh, yes. Um, what uh, so AAA has been um, a, cat for a catalytic for the for the um, uh, ecosystem all over the continent. Naiban uh, is a child of uh, African Angel Academy. Uh, Nick and I and many of the, of the other members were were part of the Academy uh, UK Tech Hub cohort, and then we set up the network uh, because we had already built uh, that bond and we already shared uh, interest uh, in startups um, that had been showcasing at the Academy. So it's a very uh, a practical uh, training that, is, that has proved to be successful, not only in Kenya, but many other markets. And uh, the 50-50 um, gender commitment is extremely important because it has uh, delivered uh, what we were all hoping for, uh, which is more women investors. So Naiban, who uh, came out of uh, AAA 50-50, uh, because the Kenyan cohort had to be 50-50, uh, maintained that ratio at a very high level. Um, today, we are 43% uh, women uh, angels in Naiban among the, the 80 members, and we are going to probably reach 100 members uh, by the end of this year. That's a lot of women investors. Uh, and um, what you see is that we've invested in many more women CEOs than uh, any uh, angel groups. And even uh, we're doing better than, uh, than gender lens angel groups because uh, we've backed 50% uh, of our startups are, have a woman CEO. And 53% women uh, CEO or woman co-founder, and that's uh, that's really a huge uh, um, achievement. Um, and uh, it's not hard to do once you have women on the investing side. So it's uh, it's proven once again. It's very easy to fix to fix the gender gap. Just uh, give more money money to in the hands of women. And AAA has done it, and it's not easy because I was helping uh, the team uh, building the one hand cohorts. And uh, uh, it's quite not easy to find enough women um, uh, to sit uh, for the for the academies. But uh, like we we spent um, hours and hours uh, talking to a woman to ask another woman to uh, to um, to pitch the case of the academy. So it's quite hard to do, but it works. So it's really worth uh, the effort and the patience. Thank you. Thank you, Mulinga. Uh, I'm not going to do any more uh, <laughs> any more pitch, uh, any more sales pitch for the academy. I think <laughs> uh, Mulinga is doing a good job. But uh, just to underline that point, that I think um, you know solving uh, you know that uh, gender issue from an investment perspective, I think it, it has to be something deliberate. Uh, and I think if we had started this out without being very deliberate as the African Angel uh, Academy, uh, the statistics would not be what they are. Uh, we were very deliberate that in each coach we wanted to have a 50 percent uh, mix uh, on either gender uh, and that has helped a lot uh, to be able to you know uh, to show some of the results uh, that uh, we have uh, thanks uh, Nick thanks Stephen uh, Nick Bilal um, I'm has talked to you know given a lot of the stats of kind of where I'm coming from with Niban um, I consider myself a, a founder first but one of those that as you mentioned in the presentation 
founder first and then turned to angel investing and, and really enjoying that process. Uh, here today, I'm in the capacity of one of the founding members of Niban. Uh, as Umalinga mentioned, we are a Kenya-based group uh, that you know kind of started organically coming out of the AAA program and grew quickly from 20 members to 80 plus now. Um, really excited and, and have had a lot of fun uh, making, we're doing our 17th investment right now in the first 18 months of operation. So super active group, uh, love the founders that we're backing uh, and just, yeah, have a lot of, having a lot of fun doing it. And I think to, to your point of the presentation, Stephen, one of the things I wanted to highlight was, I think there's this perception that you have to be mega wealthy to be an angel investor. And I think people are realizing, especially as part of a group, you don't. I mean, we have a lot of people writing $3,000, $4,000, $5,000 checks. Um, we, you know, we invest together and that enables us to get into part of these deals, but also, you know, sort of not bet the farm on, on one deal. And I think it's a smart way to go about it. So I think there's a lot of people out there that could be doing this and hopefully will be doing this in the, in the future. Thanks, uh, Nick. Uh, and uh, to the point of, you know, creating syndicates and working in groups, you know, hunting in packs, uh, because that has a lot of advantages. Um, Viola, just uh, coming back to you, uh, why is this exciting for you? Of course, I've painted the picture in terms of how the funding uh, numbers have grown and so forth. But why is this exciting uh, to you, the, you know, the, being an angel investor, being part of this movement? Um, thank you. Thank you for that. I mean, I think um, one of the things that Fadila said at the beginning of this was the economic engine that um, angels provide, you know, um, to our economies. Yumalenga also mentioned a couple of things, which is that we need to create jobs on the continent. And I think that as Africans, we're very aware of the need on the continent. And so I think those, those two things, but I think what can really get lost a lot of time when we start to make a, a lot of these announcements um, around funding, which you, you know, which is in your, in your presentation and the increase in funding, there seems to be a sense that there's a lot of capital coming into Africa. But at, at the end of the day, Africa is still extremely undercapitalized. We still receive less than 1% of VC funding globally, um, even in comparison to our global our population, um, to the world population, and also our GDP contribution. And so in that sense, you still need people to write those first checks to back companies so that the additional capital can come in. There are many country, companies, uh, countries on the continent that have challenges when it comes to FDI. And I think that People forget that when we talk about VC funding, it is still part of that big pot of money that needs to come into the continent, that it actually needs to also be created from the continent. And I think once again, a lot of angels become invest, you know, become bigger and bigger investors as we create this, um, this shared prosperity. And also to emphasize the shared prosperity, if we're going to create the type of continent we want, everyone also has to be part of creating that future. I mean, one of the things you said um, is that angels also want to make a return on their investment, and there's a huge opportunity to do that. And so I think all those things combined give me a real, ex give me excitement about this space. Number one, the fact that we're out every day building value, creating jobs, and also there could be a shared prosperity as we build a future together. Those are the things that excite me about the space. Um, uh, thanks, uh, Biola. Uh, and maybe just to bring you uh, in here, uh, same question, but uh, extending it a bit. So I think Biola has mentioned the point that, uh, you know, there's a lot of capital coming in, which looks really exciting, but then we're still undercapitalized uh, as, you know, as, as a continent, uh, so to say. Uh, and so but the part I wanted you to expand on was, as a Naiban, are you also making investments across uh, the continent? And how do you see, I mean, are most of your investments in the four big economies or are you also like venturing to the other economies? And maybe how do you see, how, how do we address, how do we make this more uniform, right? Uh, because at, at least Naiban has done a, job, a good job in terms of making more uniform from a gender perspective. But then there's also a geography uh, issue that you also need to think about, uh, your opinion on that. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's a challenging one. I think uh, from the stats of our 17 investments, either two or three of them have been outside of Kenya. And part of that is because, you know, most of us are based in Kenya. I think we're 88% based in Kenya. And so that's where we can add the most value. So I think that goes back to that, you know, what AAA has been trying to do, et cetera, is we need more angels in those locations that understand those markets and that can make those introductions, because that's a lot of the value of 
of what angels bring, right? If I do an investment in Namibia and I can't do any introductions there, maybe I'm not the right investor. So I think that just goes to the point of we we really need to sort of democratize this and bring angels from across the continent uh, to this game. Well, thanks for that. And uh, finally, just to bring you in, because, you know, you look at the macro picture, right? Um, and a lot's been said about the big four. Uh, what, what is happening in the rest of the continent? And how do we accelerate uh, the pace uh, of the rest of the continent? Yeah, I mean, for the past, uh, for the past 10 years, I know the big, the big four have attracted a lot of attention, you know, and uh, the, the, these, these ecosystems have been also very dynamic. But one element to, to really highlight is the fact that each and every country on the continent has its own capabilities and its own complexity. And uh, 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 it's only now that a number of uh, Andrew Group uh, are pretty much looking outside the jurisdictions. You know, you're seeing uh, 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 cross-border investment. And of course, that has been highly facilitated by the existence of a local network. So for example, I, I remember seeing a transaction last year, a cross-border transaction last year in Mauritius. We had a contribution of Deso Angel from South Africa, Lagos Angel Network, uh, Victoria Angel from Kenya, and uh, there was another, no, that was, there were three angel network contributing to that. But I must also highlight that countries that never had angel network uh, have today uh, uh, pretty much established a very, a very solid ground. I take an example of uh, DRC. You have an angel network that was created in DRC called the DRC Impact Angel run by uh, Hannah Subai and uh, uh, other co-founders. I and mean, this is a fairly new angel network, but they have all currently have a pipeline of very interesting uh, founders that they are investing into. And uh, we, we, we're also looking into investing in that, well, co-investing with them through Catalytic Africa. So essentially, you're now seeing that uh, countries that were not particularly uh, uh, keen to establish angel network are now waking up and saying, setting up the engine network, and then also leveraging on the existing network to build capacity, but also to draw in capital in terms of cross-border investment. So um, uh, we, we're really seeing, of course, when you look at the continent, you, you look at the continent from a perspective of uh, different jurisdiction, but also different culture and market sizes. And you also have uh, the fact that there's a huge gap between the uh, Francophone Africa and the Anglophone Africa. But now we're also seeing the Lusophone also emerging. So, and the role that Eban has played in actually making sure that this uh, part of the continent is also visible has been to also create value by building templates of documentation to facilitate early stage investment. Take an example of uh, Francophone Africa, for Francophone countries, specifically those countries falling within the jurisdiction of OHADA. We have designed uh, a set of documentation to facilitate early stage investment, right? These are the kind of things that we do. And uh, apart from the, Luso, the, the Francophone countries, we're also designed for Lusophone countries. So um, just to land saying that there's a big difference among the countries, and, uh, and I know that the, the big four have led the whole discourse and so forth, but now angel investors are also looking at what is happening in those countries that have never had our attention before. And clearly there's something happening. We had an example of Senegal last year with WAVE. Uh, we have DRC that is coming up. We have Mali. We have uh, Sierra Leone. We have other countries that, that never mentioned off. And of course, Ghana also is coming up very strongly. So I'm really happy that now the whole angel investing uh, um, portfolio is spreading across the continent and, uh, and of course which is very much reflected by a network that has been established on these multiple countries that we're seeing on the map. Uh, uh, thanks uh, Fadila. Uh, thanks Fadila for that and uh, for creating that big picture and 
I'm, I'm guessing that if people are interested with the template documents you mentioned, if they come to the ABAN website, uh, uh, do they have to be members to access those or? Oh, no, not at all. This is free of charge and is uh, open to everybody. Okay. So everybody can have access yeah. to the documentation. Of course, we always advise to uh, bring in a lawyer to take a look, a last look before it is used, you know, for any transaction. But uh, okay. it's free of charge and open to everybody. Okay. Brilliant. Uh, so feel free to visit the ABAN website. Uh, maybe finally, you can just type it into the chat and uh, there's some resources that you can be able to access. Um, uh, maybe uh, Wulinga, uh, as uh, Farila was speaking, I, I just thought, you know, you, you, you're you part of many angel groups across the continent. Uh, and of course, uh, you're from Rwanda. Um, maybe you can give us, uh, you know, the, the experience that you've had, uh, especially trying to create something uh, in Rwanda from an angel uh, group perspective, uh, trying to push Rwanda so that it's not, uh, you know, the smaller cousin of Kenya, which is in East Africa in, uh, in this case. And maybe some of the key learnings that you've picked out of that, that maybe someone else from another country was sort of like saying, okay, in this conversation, I love it and everything, but how do I create context in terms of what I can do in my country, assuming it's not where uh, the other countries are? Uh, thank you for the, the question, Stephen. So, um, um, indeed, uh, in Rwanda, myself and, uh, and others, uh, and against that, Dean Cohn is on the call, we're trying to uh, build the angel community. There have been uh, angel deals in Rwanda, um, there have been VC deals in Rwanda, but um, there needs to be much more uh, because uh, that, uh, I mean, country needs to develop and uh, with the ambitions of uh, the country, you need to, uh, to match that at the early stage uh, investment uh, level. So we've created uh, an angel network, we've done one deal, um, and uh, we're hoping to do many more. The angel network is uh, not yet sustainable because um, people are not yet at the stage where they're happy paying fees, and it's quite normal in the beginning, uh, but hopefully this is changing. Um, we benefited from a lot of support from uh, ABAN and uh, African Angel Academy. Uh, we benefited uh, from a lot of support from other angel groups that want to help us um, from the continent, but also from outside. Um, like Business Angels uh, Europe uh, reached out to us because uh, they want to help in Rwanda, for example. So that really has been uh, quite um, uh, encouraging. But still, it's quite hard. Um, we, we're suffering. The level of red tape uh, is uh, incredible, even if it's Rwanda. Um, registrar, uh, people don't understand what uh, angel investing is. Uh, they don't know what a convertible note is, what a safe is. Uh, it's quite it's quite complicated. And um, the country is on the learning curve, even though it's a very progressive place. Rwanda is, uh, is uh, development-focused uh, and uh, pragmatic. But that doesn't mean that people at registrar uh, are themselves uh, able uh, to understand what angel investing is. So, yeah, we we we're in that stage. Um, and um, the ecosystem is a bit um, awash with grants, uh, and that's a big problem uh, because we've lost two deals uh, to grants. So in the case of Business Angels Rwanda, the tickets are between $10,000 and $30,000, which is less than what uh, Nairobi Business Angels or Dakar Network, Dakar Network Angels can invest, for example, because, I mean, we are a smaller network. But uh, it's going to make a difference for an entrepreneur uh, to, to go from... Um, uh, very um, like uh, uninvestable to um, more investable, um, and um, we need those tickets to to be um, to those checks to be written. But uh, yeah, um, there's uh, grants of 50k um, just for being available in Rwanda, because all the FIs want to say they've done stuff in Rwanda. So the entrepreneurs are very rationally choosing grants of 50k for just being. And not uh, taking a, a ten thousand, uh, fifteen thousand ticket from angels, which uh, requires DD, requires accountability, and, and etc. So that's that's a problem that uh, needs to be fixed. Sorry, uh, final. Uh, sorry, uh, Mulinga, uh, on the grant uh, aspect, it really challenges an ecosystem. And I think uh, if I look at Kenya, which has received a lot of uh, grants, we started from there. Uh, I'm just hoping the funders move much faster to a point where, you know, the, the grants are not just a competition price, but they also have deliverables uh, to them because it helps to create the pathway for investors when they come on board and they are demanding 
such an uh, specific uh, things. Um, Viola, let me just bring you in and uh, Nick. Uh, and uh, you know, we've discussed the big numbers. We've discussed uh, where we are at, sort of like some of the uh, uh, what's been done in terms of trying to make this more democratic across the continent. I wanted to speak about just some real impact metrics um, that you know the angel groups are having, angels are having in the uh, continent. Uh, and maybe uh, be like you know, Lego Angels uh, Network is one of the oldest angel uh, networks uh, in the continent. Uh, uh, you might just share just uh, some really impact metrics on the ground that you feel you've been able to achieve, uh, and then I'll pass this also to uh, Nick just to create a bit of color around that. Sure, thank you. I mean, I think some of the um, one of the, some of the things that we've been able to do is streamline investing. And so through the Lagos Angel Networks, we've had quite a number of syndicate spin off and actually create more angel groups. So now, I mean, Rising Tide was a syndicate inside um, Angel Net um, Lagos Angel Networks. We have about eight different syndicates that invest in different sectors. And I think these are the ways that actually a lot more investments happen um, of about the 755 um, startups in Nigeria, um, you know, at least 30%, you know, 30% of those have come through one or two of the angel networks in the country. Um, one of the things that's really, that's, that's also still where there's a lot of work to do is that as we talk about these big fours, all this, all this happening in the big fours, when you put your um, slide up, there's only really four big angel networks that's part of ABAN in, in Nigeria. Nigeria has um, over 36 states. It has um, six regions. So we do still need to do much more work in creating more <clears throat> more angel networks, especially in the regions where there still needs to be a lot of economic activity because innovation is happening across the country. And so there is a concentration that when we say the big four, that we're actually talking about Lagos sometimes. And I think that's the work that Lagos Angel Network is trying to do by co-investing with other angel networks. We actively co-invest with other angel networks, but also becoming a network of networks to actually um, create other networks um, across the country. Um, that's that's really where I see the future of Lagos Angel Network, um, where we actually work with um, some of the other regions in the country to create more more networks. So that's really our big focus now over the next couple of years. Um, another thing is that we've been able to um, to produce notable um, angels. I mean, one of the um, some of the biggest um, angels across the continent have also been um, people that have been part of a band. People like TD, people like um, Richard. These are people that have been leaders on the continent when it comes to um, creating angel networks, but also um, have also facilitated collaborations through angel networks. So Lagos Angel Network um, with TD Leadership invited Cairo Angel Networks to Nigeria. That's where that first network was made. And now we're, we're you know, now I'm part of Cairo Angels Network and really helping with lead, leading their East and West Africa investments. And so I think that these these type of cross-border um, pollinations are, are really important. Um, as part of the Africa Academy, you know, we also did um, a cross, you know, being able to lead a cross-border syndicate um, when we saw from the showcase. So I think these are the things that actually, um, and one of those was a Nigerian, um, was a Nigerian um, company, which we then got investors from Kenya and South Africa as part of our cohort to invest in that. So I think once again, these are um, these are learnings from that. We have been trying to finalize our data around how many angels we've trained and that data will be coming out soon in our report. Um, we have now also appointed an executive director, which is really critical to um, to building a strong angel network. We didn't have one for a while. And I think this also is a big challenge when it comes to building networks, leadership, funding for those networks, um, community building for those networks and how to actually build those communities. So in as much as Lagos Angel Network has a long history, we've also had some laws, we've had some back and forth. And we also have had some of the challenges that actually was in your presentation, which is in the beginning um, as, as the speed to finalize deals 
um, was changing, I think we also had to learn to change with that speed. And I think that um, that is something that angel networks have to be aware of. So as you go out and form these angel networks, you have to be aware of that. A big thing too, that we've been part of is advocacy. Um, one of the things um, that we talked that we're, I know we're going to talk about this a little bit more is how angel investing is a, is a local sport. And the reason it's a local sport is because angels have the ability to understand some of the headwinds that might be coming down the pipeline and really try to be advocates for um, for startups in that sense, which is why Lagos Angel Network has also been a huge part of building out the Nigerian startup bill, um, which we're hoping will um, finally get passed and signed by the president. Um, we've had a couple of votes on it and that's been going well. But what um, just to just to give you a sense of what angels do and why angels are important to every ecosystem growing is because we all live in very, um, very interesting countries across the continent where regulators um, are very, are very skittish. Sometimes regulators can come up with sweeping regulations that can um, really affect a lot of startups. So we saw the crypto ban in Nigeria. Um, and really trying to find workarounds around that. These are areas where angels become real advocates for startups. We saw the um, logistics um, ban on um, motorcycle deliveries and how that affected quite a number of startups in that space. And so once again, this is an area where Lagos Angel Network activated, um, started making calls and lobbying and really trying to make sure that we can understand the regulation and also help our startups understand the regulation. Um, and so these are, you know, the, you know, I, I don't yeah. want to miss out these points of the things that we do um, when it comes to our impact. So some of it is data driven, which is training, which is um, things around the Nigerian startup bill and also um, informing and supporting new angel networks. Um, yeah. I'll, I'll pause there. No, uh, and thanks, uh, Biola. I think it's really impressive just to hear uh, what uh, Lagos Angels uh, Network has been able to do uh, other than just making investments, now creating new angel groups and so forth. Um, and I think it's very, uh, uh, you know, uh, laudable what you're doing. And I think as other angel groups sort of like mature and get to the point where, you know, they know what they're doing, they're comfortable with that, they have a bit more resources, uh, members are more sticky. I guess that's, uh, you know, the way to go uh, in this case. Uh, maybe, uh, Nick, just to jump to you in terms of uh, how you see your impact uh, metrics uh, in this case, and then uh, just some of the challenges of sort of like creating a new, new angel group uh, and how you're responding to those. Okay. Let me, if you'll allow me just to jump back for one second, this issue of the grants, and I come from an NGO background, so I have to say something there. Like, I mean, what ABAN has done with Catalytic Africa, I mean, for, for donors, if there's donors out there listening to this, if you want to support private sector development, why not invest alongside of angels who have their skin in the game, who are they going to be there to support these enterprises, et cetera. So I love what ABAN has done with that. So I just had to give that that plug and, and say, let's let's be smarter with this donor money. Um, in terms of impact, I mean, one of the things that I mean, we're pretty early in terms of our investing journey as a group, but you know, I've been happy to see out of the 17 investments, five have raised future funds. Uh, totaling over $5 million. Um, you know, we put in 600K. So being able to spur those future rounds is exciting. Um, I think one thing that I'm starting to see a trend of is people are, and, and I'm sure for groups that have been around a lot longer, they've seen it as well, but outside investors, which is still where a lot of the money is coming from for startups, uh, love to invest alongside of local angels. I think it gives them comfort that there is local knowledge that they're, you know, again, are people going to be holding hands, opening doors, et cetera. That they might not be able to do. So I found that you know when some local angels go into a deal, oftentimes that deal closes faster, enables you know gets maybe some international investors off the fence faster. So I think that's a that's a big piece that we can kind of help catalyze uh, more investments coming into local startups and to, and, to, and to local founders, which I think is an important part as well. Uh, uh, to your question, yeah, go ahead. You did, you did <laughs> I thought you forgot the second piece. Yeah, yeah, I did. I was excited about that donor piece. Um, yeah, I think around the, the sustainability, it, it is challenging, right? So I think, you know, you have to, as Amelia said, you know, you've got to create value and before people are willing to pay for that, you know, somehow, how do you get over that hump to making sure that people are willing to pay membership or, you know, however you make that group, uh, sustainable, like that's, that's our year two challenge. Um, you know, I think we have some good foundations, but we're not fully sustainable ourselves. So 
it's, it's not an easy thing to do, but, uh, and I think that is where, and I've also encouraged some other donors. It's like, if you want to see these things happen, you might actually have to offer some support to early stage angel groups because it is hard to hit sustainability. Um, if you can pay for some administrative help, et cetera, in those early days so that then you can get to those membership fees, which offers you the, you know, the ability to sustain yourself, then it can, you know, then that legacy kind of lives on of that donor support. Um, uh, thanks, uh, Nick, and uh, you know it's just part of. It. I think angel groups. I feel like they're just startups, right? <laughs> and once you conceptualize that you're running a startup, then you know you can uh, run the journey in a much better way. Now, <laughs> it seems like we just started, and uh, we already have to finish because we only have four minutes uh, to close. So, uh, unfortunately, we just get to the close bit, and well, I'm going to start with you, uh, Fadila. And my last question is just: What do you see as the future? Uh, of you know the Africa angel investing ecosystem, um, you know what needs uh, to happen to like get us to where we uh, we should be. Um, and precisely for you, finally, I also just mentioned a few things about catalytic uh, catalytic Africa because it's having a lot of impact uh, in terms of how deals are going to be done and maybe how deals should be done in the in future. One minute, finally, because like, we have four minutes. All right, that sounds good. So one thing that we have tried, we have been working on really in the, in the effort to support our angel network has been to, how do we create a solution that will actually increase the investment into startups? And we created, we co-founded Catalytic Africa along with Afrilabs. Essentially, Catalytic Africa is a co-matching fund that invests with our angel network in the selected startups. So essentially, we can either double or triple the amount invested by those angel network and angel investors. So that's one. Number two is that Urban is expanding its scope of uh, a footprint across the continent by specifically focusing in the create in the creating new wave of angel network that will be focusing on space. I think we've lost Fadila. Fadila, are you there? No. Um, I think uh, we'll <laughs> jump on. Uh, uh, once Fadila is able to finish, uh, to, to rejoin, she can uh, continue with her point. Uh, uh, Biola, uh, same question. <laughs> um, sorry, can you just remind me again? I was so yeah, yeah. <laughs> sorry. Was so busy just, listening uh, to Fadila. Uh, about when you see, as you're closing remarks, when you see, what do you see as the future of... Uh, you know, the African angel investing and uh, movement to the continent. So, I mean, I think that there still needs to be um, strong networks, strong support for networks. I know that there is technical assistance, um, but there needs to be, like you said, where it is a startup. Um, we are, we are, we need funding, we need support, but also too, I mean, I think that one of the things is how also we can work together and collaborate and continue to support um on startups, because at the end of the day, one of the things we're also realizing to get the scale we need um, across the continent, we do have to go cross-border. We have to improve um, ways that we're doing cross-border training. And that means that we all have to um, work together, collaborate, and improve things like AFTA, improve things like PAPS, things that are going to actually make the vision of an African rising um, truly realized. Um, and so I think angel groups are the beginning of this journey. And the more we can work together, the more we can collaborate, the, the, the faster we can get to our destination. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Biola. Uh, Umulinga? Thank you for the question, Stephen. So I think the, the future is bright. Uh, there's more and more awareness on the continent uh, on angels. Uh, so we will see uh, more and more entrepreneurs uh, seeking funding from angels. Um, there's also more and more awareness uh, from the development um, funders that uh, it works, um, like empowering local angels. So I expect that uh, we receive more support and, and, and hopefully... Uh, um, they will align with our uh, values to like back um, um, entrepreneurs that create jobs uh, that create value on the continent. So um, I, I think the future is really bright. Uh, it was um, it was a, a tough few years um, before uh, COVID, but um, like right now, I think um, there's a lot of uh, good things happening in terms of support and in terms of uh, successful investments. So yeah, it looks good. Merci beaucoup. Uh, and last but not least, Nick. I know I have 15 seconds, so I will uh, just say 
Yeah, it, it's really exciting and it's a lot of fun to do. And I think there are a lot of potential people who could be doing this. So I would say to those who might be on the fence around it, you know, find one of these groups that can help guide you through it. I, the the most experienced angels that I've met just said you you know you have to learn by doing. So get out there and make some small bets and have fun supporting great founders. Uh, thanks, uh, Nick. And I see that uh, Farila is back. Farila, we lost you. Uh, I think you're uh, explaining sort of like uh, what Catalytic Africa has been able to do. Um, yeah. Can we give and you maybe I, 30 seconds? I, I, yeah, and I was also mentioning that we have a new uh, angel network that has been created. And this new angel network would focus on specific sector, including climate smart agriculture, smart cities, digital trade, and clean technology. Now, uh, uh, just to end, I would like to mention that uh, we have to realize that uh, the continent, there's this new wave, this new dimension of value creation that is being done or created by founders, or well, we call them startups on the continent. And every single stakeholders need to understand that this is a new dimension. It's not business as usual. It's a new dimension. And these are the founders that will be able to create value. And this value will be able to solve the job creation issues that the continent is facing. And I call on all the stakeholders to come together to really support this whole uh, new wave of founders that have been created on the continent. And I would also like to actually uh, point out the great job and the role that angel investors and angel network have played so far in the ecosystem and i expect this to even grow bigger and bigger so last year we did uh, well startup ecosystem attracted five billion dollars with uh, four hundred thousand dollars contribution from aban's member at the end of this year i expect this number to double and next year i expect the same to also double so the, the future is only brighter we're only going up we're marching forward there's no way it will go down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thanks, uh, Farila, for those uh, closing remarks. Uh, thank you, uh, Biola. Thank you, Mulinga. Thank you, Nick. Uh, I think this has been a very powerful uh, session. If you're out there uh, and you want to be part of the movement, uh, you can reach out to the speakers, I think, uh, through the chat. Uh, if you want to learn more about angel investing, please talk to us at the Africa Angel Academy. Uh, I, I must add that, uh, you know, our experience also as Victoria Business Network is that, you know, deals uh, get done and there's value to be created. Uh, just uh, a parting shot uh, from Victoria that we've uh, so far put in around a million dollars into startups. Uh, but then of all that, uh, so the startups have gone on to raise $50 million. Uh, and there's a lot of value that has been created for startups. And so if you're someone who's sort of like uh, looking at this, you're wondering, you know, does this work? Yes, it does work. We have real angels who have just given us a picture and there's a lot of work that's being done to support you. Thank you very much. Uh, enjoy the rest of the sessions.